I stand before you today to present a state spending plan for the year ahead that reflects our commitment to fiscal responsibility, equity, and well-being of all New Jersey residents and ensuring the state is well prepared for the future. In February, Governor Murphy delivered the FY 2024 budget address. Since then, this, legis this legislature, and particularly the Assembly Committee budget members, has worked hard to review every dollar spent and ensure the investments made in this budget represent the priorities of all New Jersey residents. This budget is strategic and impactful and is one we should all be proud of. I want to personally thank all the members of the Budget Committee on both sides of the aisle for your time, hard work, professional, professionalism, and unwavering commitment. I'd like to thank Assemblyman Wimberly, Assemblyman Benson, Assemblywoman Shapiro, Assemblyman Conaway, Assemblyman McKeon, Assemblyman McCurgy, Assemblywoman Murphy, Assemblywoman Reynolds Jackson, Assemblyman Scher. And on the other side of the aisle, I'd like to thank Budget Officer Wirtz, Assemblywoman Dunn, Assemblyman Muñoz, Assemblyman, Assemblyman Rumpf, and Assemblyman Scharfenberger. It's about, it's about that time that now I get your name correct, right? Each one of you played a vital role in our budget committee's success. Your valuable insights, dedication, and commitment to finding common ground have been instrumental in shaping a budget that reflects the diverse needs and priorities of our state. I also want to thank all the advocates and members of the public who have participated in this process through testimony, many, many hours of testimony, through letters, through phone calls, and have even taken the time to reach out. Your participation is crucial and is valued, and I thank you. As we consider this budget, and I'd like to highlight a few points that I'm proud of. This budget provides immediate tax relief to New Jersey residents who need it most, including the new anchor boost for seniors and an expansion of senior freeze, bringing the total to 20 tax cuts enacted by this legislature, working with Governor Murphy in the last six years. And Speaker Coughlin, I'd like to thank you because you've been a major part of issuing a lot of these. This budget provides a significant increase in school funding providing a record total of 11 billion in direct K through 12 aid for public schools, including an increase of 832 million, as well as 103 million in supplemental stabilization aid that was enacted earlier this year and targeted to school districts that are adjusting to changes in aid based on their enrollment. This budget prepares us well for the future with a projected surplus of over $8 billion and makes the third consecutive full pension payment of over $7 billion. This brings a total contribution to the pension fund by this legislature, working under Governor Murphy to $32.6 billion, nearly triple the amount contributed under the previous six administrations combined. The budget puts additional money in the debt defeasance prevention fund, helping to reduce state debt and avoid new debt while investing in important infrastructure projects. The FY 2024 deposit brings a total into the fund to over $9 billion over the last two years. Decisions like these, which will provide us with foundation of fiscal responsibility, has been recognized by four major rating agencies, with seven rating upgrades over the last 16 months. This budget makes so many important investments that will positively impact the lives of New Jersey residents. The budget adds money for additional property tax relief with more funding for energy tax receipts, affordable housing, education, pre-K through K-12 and higher education, transportation aid, healthcare facilities, human services and social service agencies. I'm proud of this budget because I firmly believe in the transformative power of supporting families, and this budget does so much to support so many New Jersey families. The child tax credit has proven to be a vital tool in reducing child poverty and providing essential resources for parents. By bolstering the child tax credit, we empower families to invest in their children's education, health, and well-being, thereby fostering a future, a brighter future for the next generation. And going on to have my third girl, 
I'm all about trying to empower young women to do better. And finally, I'm proud of this budget because it leaves our state prepared to handle the challenges of the future while recognizing the needs of the New Jersey residents today. While some of you may disagree with some parts of this budget, that's okay. But taken as a whole, this reflects our commitment to a stronger, fairer, and more prosperous state. And I hope you all consider the New Jersey residents as you consider your vote. We might not like everything that's in here, but overall, I think it's pretty good. I want to say uh, thank you to the chairwomen because you really laid out the why. You, you addressed all of the, the major issues that why this is a good budget. You addressed all of the issues on how this works for all New Jersey residents. And, and we cannot forget that the previous uh, uh, administration had credit down ratings nine times, but we've only had an upswing during this current administration. We also have to address the fact that we've addressed the issue when it comes to pension, and particularly when the previous administration did not. When it comes to school funding, we were drastically underfunded by many, many districts throughout the state, not just a few, where this budget has an $832 million address in public school aid and $20 million for charter schools. We also realize that our speaker and the leadership has taken aim when it comes to property tax relief, not only for homeowners, but also for renters. These are issues that affect everyday people here in the state of New Jersey, including issues when it comes to agricultural needs, when it comes to food insecurity, when it comes to public service for banking and insurance, children and family, public health services, law and public safety, and now the list goes on and on and on. There are so many reasons why this is a good budget and why we are in the upswing of doing the right things for all of the residents of New Jersey. Having served in this body when um we did not have enough money to meet our resources to follow through on our pension payments uh, for our educators to support our schools and all of our districts um, and schools and urban centers and Abbott districts were underfunded and never met the test of a thorough and efficient education uh, to survive in a pandemic where we knew that facility investments and equipment was necessary uh, to hearing from families uh, that could use support, the child tax credit being doubled, uh, was very thoughtful and intentional. Uh, I'm excited about this budget. While it does not take care of all of our asks, but I do think that care was given uh, through the countless hours of meetings and to the wee hours of the evening by our <coughs> colleagues uh, to hear what the concerns were from the southernmost tip to the northernmost tip of our state. Uh, there is still more work to be done, uh, but I will proudly be voting for this budget today. The idea is that if you are going to have, if you're going to pass a fiscally responsible budget, you're not also going to be able to make historic investments contemporaneously. And yet, what we have passed through the Budget Committee and the budget we will be voting on momentarily achieves a number of historic investments and is the pinnacle of fiscal responsibility. And in order to measure what we're achieving today, we do have to look back. We do have to contrast what we're doing with, with what we've done in years past. You know, states don't get to, and shouldn't, rely on fiscal deficit spending like our friends do in Washington, D.C. to pass their budgets down there. And after years of irresponsibility, and ironically, as we emerge from a, a global crisis of unprecedented proportions when it comes to our physical health and global public health, our state's fiscal health has never been stronger in the decade that I've been here. Not one, not two, not three, not five, not 10, but 11 credit downgrades spanning Fitch, S&P Global, and Moody's, all three of which cited our pension and health fund obligations and the inadequacy of our reserves, of our rainy day funds. And this year's budget will include a $10.2 billion surplus. Those who vote for this budget will be voting for that surplus nearly a fifth of the total budget between our on-budget surplus and our $2 billion debt defeasance fund. 
which protects us against future economic downturns, which keeps interest rates manageable on our debt, helps us avoid borrowing, and helps continue the progress that we've made under a Democratic governor and under a Democratic legislature with respect to credit upgrades. Two billion, uh, uh, two million, two million New Jerseyans saw property tax relief as a result of last year's historic anchor investment. And Mr. Speaker, thank you for your focus in particular and your championship of that and of State New Jersey and our historic property tax investment. Everyone who voted for last year's budget voted to direct that historic property tax relief to New Jersey taxpayers. Well, this year, today, we have an opportunity to build on that with a full pension payment for the third consecutive budget. The first time our state has been able to do that, by the way, in over a quarter of a century, the very first time in this millennium, if you want to talk about fiscal responsibility, how do you vote against a third consecutive straight full pension payment? Exactly the type of thing when we didn't do it that led to those downgrades. Today, Everyone who votes for this budget will be voting for $2 billion towards our state's transportation and mass transit infrastructure, a historic investment in affordable housing, and historic investments in our schools and higher education. And this year, we are ensuring through Stay New Jersey that our tax relief programs will finally be streamlined with the same deadline, with a single application, and for anyone across the aisle who's been complaining for years about gimmicky property tax rebates that don't actually show up on your property tax bill, something that my Democratic colleagues and I have also uh, lamented, you have the opportunity to rectify that today because these rebates will be applied right on your actual property tax bill at the source, at the point of charge, like we've been talking about for years. We saw this year doubling the child tax credit enacted last year by those members of this august body who voted for last year's budget. And between that and the child and dependent tax credits, 132,000 families with young children in our state who needed to access child care during and since the pandemic saw relief. This year, today, we have an opportunity to double that credit. We are doubling if you vote for this budget, the energy tax receipts, which in turn directly reduce all of our municipal property taxes. It is a budget, Mr. Speaker, that we worked hard on through the process in the committee where we had hours and hours of public hearings, hours and hours and hours of testimony where the deliberative process like in years past, during which I've served on the Budget Committee, was imperfect in terms of the late stages, but followed all of the rules set forth by our House, by our Constitution. You know, I, I stood here and I listened to someone say something about 2017, life wasn't so bad. It was pretty bad if you, come, if you depended on the earned income tax credit and you couldn't buy clothes for your kids. Maybe it wasn't so bad for you. I heard a colleague say that uh, somebody lied to the Supreme Court. That's a little harsh, isn't it? You know, the last administration ran the government based on debt. The monies that we borrowed as were the court approved We've defeased more money than we've borrowed. This budget, in my opinion, does in indeed reflect the values of the majority party and if maybe not having the yoke of having to vote with their party, many of those on the other side of the aisle. There is record spending for education funding isn't that what we're about? There's 30% more funding as it relates to pre-K. Isn't that a need? There's more money for affordable housing, 
for higher education. Those are our values. But there's so much more as it relates to fiscal prudence. Property tax relief, the anchor program, probably not named so well, but the program nonetheless, bought $2 billion and will be $2 billion more and by the way, if you vote against this budget, I saw you all vote for the speaker's program as it relates to New Jersey Stay. If you vote against this budget, in this budget has an additional $250 for every senior that is boosted through the anchor program. So think about that when you cast your vote. My colleague Raj mentioned the energy tax receipts. They've doubled from $75 million to $150 million, direct property tax. Relief. Talk about spending and you know how, and you know how much I respect you. You mentioned, oh, we're going to be in a structural debt. We've had a structural debt for 30 years. It's not like it's something new. We were close to not having one, but then, as was predicted, there was $2 billion less of revenue and there was no April surprise because the professionals told us that was likely between that and the PBAE. The full pension payment can't be emphasized some more. Put things into perspective. Okay, $7 billion. 73% of the pension payment to our entire system has been made in the last six years. That's extraordinary. $20 billion in the last three. I mentioned the defeasance and probably went out of the order I was going to speak, but I mean $1.8 billion defeased from the last administration that ran the place on debt. <coughs> the, 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 you, you know, the, the facts are, are, are stubborn things. You know, we talk about the, uh, the, the surplus. It's about $8 billion. Now, that's 14% or maybe a little bit more than that. The national average is 24%. So before anybody gets, says, let's have a party and start giving it out to whoever we want to give it to, it's fiscally prudent for the first time. We went back to those great times in 2017 and had surpluses that were like two, three hundred million. Talk about irresponsible, talk about frivolous. There's a reason why there's been seven different positive credit rating actions in the last 16 months. And that's because this budget reflects property tax relief. In the last six years, 18 different taxes have been cut. We should congratulate ourselves. Who said not to take a victory lap? I'm ready to take one. We all should as it relates to the lapsing of the 2.5 percent of the corporate business tax. And yet, it represents our values. We do the work because we're honored and privileged to serve on the committee. I know you wanted to serve on the committee. Um, and uh, not all of us are looking for credit uh, because by, when I go back home, I know where I stand in my household. This is only a portion, but we do take time away from our families. We read a lot. We have a lot of information to disperse. Um, and whether we disagree or not on how it's done, there is one thing that I, I can't even believe that, that you said, which is credit ratings, Fiscal upgrades and having savings in the bank, that matters. It should matter in our households, which it does for many of us. It should matter to our state. 